So this next video is how to use image scan right here on the PS1000. And before I begin, I just kind of want to show you this mat I have out here. Um, Hilti has these mats, like this is the PSA 13, for instance. There's also um, like another one that's a four by four uh, mat, but this is my two foot by two foot mat. Uh, anyway, what I was, I wanted to show you what the mat is and why I use it. Because technically you don't need to use a mat if you just can make the grid yourself. But what it is is it separates everything by uh, six inches. So you see here you have uh, row one, six inches wide, row two, six inches wide, three, four, etc. Then you have row five, six inches wide. And that those these uh, grids, they correlate with the size of the scanning area on the scanner. So this is, you see these nodes here, node to node. These, this is your six inch scanning area. So that's why it's a six inch area so that you can line everything up right there on the node with the line. So that's how the grid sets up. Now it has all these uh, markers on the, on the, uh, on the, on the sheet itself, just so that if you have a, uh, a known location of a, a piece of bar, because the scanner is gonna show you, hey, this piece of bar is at this X value, this Y value, et cetera, which you're gonna see in a second. You can then use these values to, to find it on the map very, very quickly. So that's how this works. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Now, just a couple more notes on this is that this mat is meant to get dirty. Um, uh, and there's been times when I take it, put on a slab of concrete, and I just spray paint it. Because if you look, the way that you basically transfer this mat to the grid, because obviously you're not going to be marking up this mat, um, you're going to actually mark the concrete on the ground. The way you do it is you see these holes, right? So here's a hole, here's a hole, right? And you notice there's a hole at every single corner and intersection of this grid. You can just put a mark inside that hole, whether you're using your wax pen, right? Wax pen to mark it on the ground, every six, which is your every six inch marks. Or, like I said, just spray paint it, and then you could pick the mat. You can pick the sheet up right away, and then just scan right there on the ground, and you're done. Um, there's been one job that we were on where we actually took this mat to Staples, and at Staples we made this a sticker, like a massive sticker, threw it down on a slab. It was kind of expensive, but hey, it's worth it uh, because what we did is we just stuck everything on the ground, and it was very easy to just kind of scan everything. We left the sticker there, and they didn't care that uh, the sticker remained on the concrete slab. It's just a piece of you know, it, does, it has nothing to do with, uh, it's going to be hidden under the structure anyway. So there's just some things for you. That's why I use this mat. So let me get into it. So image scan. I'm going to jump over here to image scan. And you see, I still have my active project on. I'm trying to get that out of the light for you. Okay, so I'm going to go to image scan. And it's going to ask me right away the grid size I want to use. If I have the 1000B, the B scan, I'm only going to have one option for grid size, which is the 2x2. Two but if you have the 1000X scan, which is the more expensive one, which has the EM sensor and the ability to export, I can go to grid size and change it to 4x4. Four four. So you have both those options, right? Now, I almost always start with the arrow pointing this way, which means that the tool is going to assume that I'm going to start in that corner, which is the top left corner. You see the 0, 0 here, 0, going X positive, Y positive. Uh, you can, if, but for whatever reason, if you prefer to change that, you can change that starting point is up to you. That's what that arrow is. So because my starting point's there, I'm going to start on this side. If it was here, oops, if it was here in the top right corner, I would start like that, okay, at the 8 column, which coincides, coincides with that. All right, so I'm going to go back to starting point 1, because that's just how I like to start everything. Now I'm lining it up on the outside edge of that first that first row. And then I'm going to start scanning. I'm going to scan all the way over here. And you're going to see how that works. So I'm going to press my red button on the side. I'm scanning now at the top. You'll see it's red. And it turns to black. Red meaning that you had to make sure it gets to black before it actually records a scan. Now, what you didn't, what I went to quickly is as I keep going row by row, you'll see here that I'm going to not even press anything. And it stops on its own. Because remember, the wheels are keeping track of the distance I'm going. So I don't really have to worry about pressing the button every single time. I just press the button and go, wait for it to finish, and then I know I can go to the next one. Okay, so I'm gonna go again, see how it's red, 
Now it's black, meaning I've gone far enough to actually make it valid data, and I can go. Now, so I'll just kind of finish this up, five. And this is go to five. See, now this is go to six. You might be, want to be able to skip this part of the video if it's making sense to you. Seven. And eight. Now you see my, my paper here on the ground is kind of not super taut. You know, ideally, if I want to keep this as accurate as possible, I try to make sure that this paper or my, or my grid is as accurate as possible. So just keep in mind that there are those kind of variances. Okay, so now I can look at my scan. And I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to do one more image scan after this just to show you one more example of how you can modify your scan a little bit. But just so you know, once you scan it, you're going to see your top-down view here. Let me get over here out of the light. Your top-down view on the top. Your cross-sections on your x-axis and then your cross-section on your y-axis. And those cross-sections are defined by this, I hope you can see this, this magenta line here and the magenta line here. And because I'm in my cross-section view right now, I can move this wherever I want so I can see different views. So let me move my x-axis all the way down to the bottom. You'll see the x-axis cross-section view is changing as I move that magenta line. Now I'll move my y-axis, and you'll see the y-axis view changing as I move it. Right, because this is your cross-sectional view. If you picked up the slab and looked at it from the side, that's the view you'd be looking at. The rebar poking in. Okay, so now if I let's say I want to know, okay, well here's a there's a piece of rebar right here, or obviously an object, and I want to be able to mark that on the ground. Well, look how easy it is. First of all, I know that it's in the last column, right next to the right next to the edge. So I know that basically I got a piece of rebar going right here. I, I don't even really have to be super careful about marking it. It's pretty obvious, but if I want to know exactly where it is, I can move my magenta line over to it. Let me put it in the center of that object. So now I'm basically in the center of it. And you can see my x at my x value. Let me make sure you can see that. My x value is 18.9. So I know that at 18.9, right, 18, 19, 20. So 18.9, I'm centered right on that piece of rebar. So I hope that uh, kind of clears it up a little bit for you. Um, so that's how that works. So I'm going to do the same thing on the y-axis. So if I wanted to find where these locations are exactly, I can put my, my horizontal line right on top of it to say, okay, my y is 12.8 and mark it accordingly. I hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comments if that's confusing. But now let me change my view to my depth view. And now I'm, now I'm controlling the cross-sectional magenta lines. So if you remember, up down, it's moving my depth up and down. So I can, sorry, not my depth, but the act, well, yeah, it moves, moves the depth, but at that window that I gave it, as I move up and down, I'm seeing different layers of this concrete, right? Moving up and down, seeing different objects. Now what I can do is I can also, okay, you see there's two lines here. You have the solid magenta line and a dotted. I can use my right and left arrows to increase the window I'm looking at in that window as I move the depth of them down. And I really like always, with every scan, to eventually shrink that window all the way down to zero. Right? You see down here my zero window is my window is zero. Well, it's 0.2 tenths of an inch, right? And then my depth as high as I can on the slab. And I'll go down layer by layer. I'm just pressing the down button. And I see that the first layer is those vertical bars with the horizontal right beneath it. All right? I keep going down. I have another object right here at the bottom. And while I'm looking at this, I can see over here how far deep exactly it is and exactly where my magenta lines are on the cross-section view. So I hope that helps understanding how to use this image scan. And so you can see my point. When you have the software with the tool, yeah, you can get this image in there. But if you're using this tool just for hip prevention, you might like just being able to use this tool as a device that you can take to the field and use just with the, just the scanner itself because you get so much information with it. If you need the software, I get it, to do reports, more analytics, things like that. But if this is what you need the tool for to just check and drill, check and drill, without having to make a report, you don't need to export, and the 1000B scan might be plenty for you. Just keep that in mind. I know people buy the B scan and then sometimes they go forward and say, you know what, I'm gonna upgrade to the X scan. You can do that as well. So you can always start with the B and upgrade to the X. 
Now on here on the left, I don't have to go over these again, but again, you can change your contrast. You can change your parameters, like your concrete, your dielectric value. You can go from method to advanced and standard. And you go to your visualization, turn your EM sensor on or off, right? Still no electromagnetic activity for me. And then you're done. So that's how this image scan works. And you can see that it's now saved. Let me go back to my, you can see now, I have one quick scan recording that I had earlier in my other video, and now I have this image scan recording as well. So it's showing me that it's updating. I wanna show you one more thing. So let's say I come back to image scan, and let's say for instance that uh, when I'm scanning this area, for whatever reason, the entire eight row is blocked. I can't, for whatever reason, I can't, let's say it's impeded by an object and I can't move my scanner anywhere past around here, okay? What do you do in that case? Can I still get the data for this area on the left? And the answer is yes. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going to set up my arrow still in the top left. I'm going to say record. And I'm going, 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 right? And then say, boom, right here I hit an object. Well, what do I do? Obviously, I'm not done scanning the row. What can I do? Well, I can just press the record button. And you'll see it stops the scan there for me. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing for row two. I hit an object right here. Just press the record button and stop it. And I'm going to show you what this looks like on the image scan. It's actually pretty neat how it can do this for you. It it, what it's gonna do is gonna indicate where you stopped and so you know what data you can look at that's, that, that's actually been recorded. Okay, so I have those five. Now, let's say that for whatever reason, I don't care about this fifth row, right? Let's say that, yeah, I know there's data here, but all I really care about is this area and I don't wanna take the time to scan this fifth row, this fifth col uh, column, I mean column. I can come in here and say, you know what, Screw, uh, I'm going to skip five. I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to skip five. Now I'm at six, and so now I can just start six. And so what I'm doing is basically I'm controlling what I want to see on my image scan. I'm not, and I'm trying to speed up my process here. All right, so here I am scanning seven. Okay. So now, if you look, here's what I've scanned. I know I can't scan eight, so I'm gonna skip eight, and now it's gonna process the image for me, okay? So what, 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 what do we keep in mind? Look at, the, look at the image. Remember, I skipped five, so you can see this white line down the middle of it. That means that it's been skipped going horizontally down, I mean, going vertically down. And over here, you see these white lines. It's saying I scanned, and then boom, stopped. Scanned, boom, stopped and that this one, this entire vertical white line has not been scanned. So the only data that I can really verify myself with is this data right here. Row six and, sorry, column six and rows one, two, three, four, right here. This is all the data that's been fully scanned that I can analyze. Does that make sense? It's because I was able to, I'm able to kind of customize how I do this in, in certain situations. I hope that helps you and that you can use this to your advantage at the time, but most of the time when you do an image scan, you're gonna be able to get the whole scan out there for you. But I definitely wanted to show you this because I know that there's gonna be a time you're gonna run into this. I hope that helps and leave me comments if you have any questions.